making this video basically to show how to install the Civic Type R rear diffuser. Uh, when I ordered it from Europe, there was really no instructions. There was no website like the other Honda aftermarket parts. You'll get a couple things in the box with it. So obviously there's the carbon fiber diffuser right there. It's got kind of this weird design that I've never seen before. They're like stuck on zip ties uh, and 3M double stick tape. And then there's a couple holes for those pain in the butt clips that Honda normally puts on everything. Um, with it, you'll get the zip tie clips and the other push pin type clips. You'll get a uh, cleaner for the 3M tape. You get these three um, basically stencils. Uh, they're reversible, but the only problem is there's only one side that has the printing on it. So you will have to reverse it and understand that uh, wherever the holes need to be at. It's kind of cool because the push pin type clips, I'll get into this later. Uh, it shows you basically where those go, but where the holes need to be drilled in the car, they're not pre-cut out. I'm assuming that is so you can use a center punch to find the center of that hole. So you're not putting that hole off center. Um, it took me a minute to figure out these stencils. I assumed originally that CTR was Civic Type R, but obviously that's center. Um, so center of the car is where you'll use those arrows. I'm gonna use this dial caliper, this center punch, and these uh, double stick tape mini squares for like photos and stuff like that. That way I can set these stencils on the car. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is why I'm using the dial calipers. The dial caliper is basically to figure out how big my hole is in relationship to how big my drill bit is. Um, I'm gonna use the center punch at the center of the X. I'm gonna do this side of the stencil first. That way it'll leave an imprint with where the center punch is. I'll show you this later. Um, when I flip the stencil over and use it on the other side. The next step is going to be placing your sticky squares, uh, scotch tape, double-sided tape on the stencils. So now that I've got the sticky tape added onto my stencil, this is the back side of the car, exhaust is there, there's the normal diffuser, there's two clips there uh, that you'll need to undo, I'm not going to show this, I think everybody knows how to do that. Uh, basically you'll pop them out with a screwdriver and then you'll line the stencil holes up. Uh, with those two correlating uh, body pins and then I'll stick the tape up and it'll wrap this part of the uh, stencil up to where I can use my center punch. The bottom part of the stencil where it says to align, you're aligning it with the back end of the bumper. I want to show you how far off the stencil would be if you were to use the holes where they were originally supposed to be. Um, it's a good half inch off. So my fear is with the, the zip tie bracket on the back of the diffuser, I really don't want a gap. Sorry for the focus. Um, I don't want a gap on the diffuser. So I went ahead and moved it up. Like I said before, um, I'm putting it over here all the way up against the body line, uh, basically towards the end of the radius. I think it's going to sit a lot better and I think I'll be happy with it with the end result. So at this point, I've got the stencil lined up. Now I'm just going to use my spring-loaded auto um, center punch. Take my center punch in the center of those crosshairs um, and go ahead and push it down. So now that I've got the center punch, uh, that double stick tape, this is where it really comes in handy. You're able to just pull it down. You see that small dimple there. Um, that's obviously where I know I need to drill my hole at. The stenciling not being on both sides and using the center punch really comes into play with the crosshairs of that hole that needs to be drilled and finding the exact center of that. You'll have a clearly defined hole on the back side uh, for you to use on the other side. So I'll get to that side now. I'm just going to use that same hole, line the center punch up and go uh, again. With these zip tie clips that Honda's put on the back of this thing, it makes it kind of a pain to get everything aligned right. Um, I would say, based on double checking the alignment of everything, I would use the end of radius uh, as the guide for where you need to line everything up. That way your holes are centered where they need to be. Um, I started using originally the marks on the other stencils that say align here. I would advise against that. I would use the end of radius as to where to align the stencil. 
I went ahead and center punched the other side. So I've got my stencil lined up here and I'm gonna center punch this side. This stencil here is a little bit tricky to find the location of where it actually goes. That's where that center marking really comes into play and makes this a whole lot easier. This last stencil here is on the bottom side of the rear diffuser. With how off the other holes have been, I'm going to go ahead and drill the other holes first. And then I'm going to put the rear diffuser on and see how uh, these holes line up. I've already gone behind the bumper. I've checked to make sure that I wasn't going to hit anything important. There's no need to take the bumper off for drilling these holes. You've got plenty of room behind. There's a good five to six inches. I'm going to drill pilot holes before I drill the holes larger. Now that I've got my pilot holes drilled, I'm going to use the drill bit that I checked with the dial caliper earlier for the zip tie push tight clips. I've got a chamfer bit. I'm going to clean these holes up a little bit. Now that I've got my holes drilled, I'm going to mock the part up and check the alignment of the third stencil. I'm glad I waited to drill these holes. As you can tell, the stencil doesn't line up perfectly, so I'm going to have to adjust my stencil. Something I noticed about how those zip tie clips are put on the back. When Honda manufactured these things, they didn't glue those in the exact same spot. So as you can tell, this side fits perfectly. But when you come to this side, there's, tiny, there's a tiny bit of a gap. And it takes a little bit too much excess pressure to get it to sit flush so my advice when you're drilling these holes something that's going to make this a little easier use the stencils where they're designed but if you need to use a stepped bit to make the hole a little larger i would do that so once i made that hole a little larger on the passenger side you can tell the fitment's a lot better um it's hard to tell in this light, but um, it's actually sitting all the way flush up to the bumper. Uh, there's there's no gap there. So when I use the reverse side of the stencil, everything lined up perfectly on the driver's side. But when I used the face of the stencil that had all the writing on it, it didn't line up exactly perfect. Um, I did need to make the holes a tiny bit larger to get everything to sit flush. But I wanted everything to sit flush. That way the 3M tape was stuck all the way around the way it's supposed to be the way it was designed to be now that i've got everything sitting flush i'm going to double check my third stencil and make sure the alignment is good and then i'll start drilling those holes over there um, that is sticking out a little bit but yeah those holes will line up and everything will be sucked in tight I've moved the stencil and now you can see that both crosshairs line up in each of the holes. So I'm going to go ahead and mark these holes and then I'll move to the other side and align the other side as well. I've marked the bottom side of the bumper with my stencil and my center punch. Now I'm drilling pilot holes to drill the holes larger. I'm taking my heat gun now and I'm heating up the 
the tape a little bit to make sure it adheres better. I'm also going to heat the plastic on the rear diffuser up. I'm going to take the backing off all of these three pieces here. Same on the other side. But these big long strips, the backing material, I'm going to take part of the way off and I'm going to use it as a pull tab to install it so it sits down flat wherever it needs to sit. While I'm down at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and install the push clips. Now that I've got the tape done and I've got the push clips installed, these are the uh, zip tie clips that I was talking about earlier. They've got these little rubber glom grommets. I don't know if you can see that they've got a tiny little slit inside of them. So you stick that on first and then you run this piece in. <laughs> 